let's talk about non 12 step and and this is an interesting thing you know when the sanctuary began we were wondering what do we call ourselves because we're not 12 step so actually i think we were the ones that came up with the term non 12 step and we were the only ones if you happen to google that back in the day and uh, so unfortunately uh, 95 percent probably about that now still uh, 95 percent of treatment centers are 12 steps they adhere to the 12 step program so um, that's what they do now what's interesting is that the 12 steps hey first of all if that were the be all and end all there wouldn't be treatment centers um, it's interesting that the 12 steps are free so a treatment center costs fifty thousand dollars to take you through this thing that you can get for free so that's just an interesting Again, it's, this is not a one-size-fits-all. So we go to anything that's not 12-step is known as non-12-step. So it really doesn't mean anything. Um, it's just a term to tell you what you're not. So when we say we're non-12-step, what we have come up with is a fully integrated holistic process. So let's just talk about what that means. Um, First of all, holistic means the entirety, the whole thing. Uh, we get phone calls that people think that just because we're including meditation means that we don't prescribe any medication. And that's not true. To be holistic, we have it all. Now, what's interesting, we found that because we're doing all these other holistic interventions and symptomology goes down, people need less medication. That's the beauty of a holistic process. Um, because we begin to feel better. But holistic means the whole thing. So that means we address the body and we know that we store toxicity, trauma, we store tension, we store a lot of things in our bodies. Our bodies are a warehouse of all the records of anything that's ever happened right in your body. Um, the gut, the gut-brain connection. We know about the vagus nerve and how there's a nerve that connects all of the organs up to the brain. So all of these things are sending unconscious signals to my brain whether I'm okay or not. Um, so we have to address all of those things. Serotonin is manufactured in the gut. It's called a neurotransmitter, but it's, it's a misnomer because it has so many functions all over the body. The interesting thing is it's primarily made in the gut. So if I'm taking an SSRI, a serotonin reuptake inhibitor, because I don't have enough serotonin on my brain, which is impossible to tell, uh, you can't measure it. And even if you could, nobody knows how much is supposed to be up there. So that's a, a, another misnomer. But let's just say it's true. If I don't have enough serotonin and I'm not taking care of the serotonin plant, then I'm missing a giant opportunity to heal. Um, then we have the mind. So any program has to include the mind. Now, what's interesting, my mind, 95% of it is unconscious, means it's back here beyond my awareness. This is where the things that are driving my behavior live. This is where my unresolved trauma lives. This is where my unresolved, all my unresolved hurts and pains live back here. This is where my dysfunctional belief lives. This is where all the things that are that are creating the situation where I get to the end of the day and I say, darn, I can't believe I did that again. And we've all had that. And we wonder why. Well, we're not going to find it here because it's all back here. So when we have a program that we have to provoke these things and get them up so we can see them, now I have something to talk about in therapy. You know, now I can, now I can get to see what the drivers of my behaviors are rather than managing a symptom hey, I spent a long time in rehab, hey, just stay away from people, places, and things, um, which is great in the beginning, but eventually people, places, and things, you know, the more you spend time getting high, you can't avoid those people, places, and things. So I got to get to what the trigger is triggering, and that's all unconscious. If we look at the soul, uh, the domains of the soul actually are one of the most important aspects of any human being because it's really... Um, our essence, our truest, most authentic nature. It's us before our wounds, be underneath our addictions. You know, I've sat with thousands of people over the years and I, I ask them, so do you think your soul's an addict? Or do you think your soul's been abused? And they're like, no, no. And that's true. My soul is separate from all that. 
But if this is where I ha assign all my meaning, if this is my essential self, and I begin to, uh, the world is no longer safe to be myself, so it's, um, I don't live in a system that, that endorses that, I have to hide who I am, maybe uh, my sexuality isn't well received with my parents, so I have to hide that, so I begin to separate from it's no longer safe to be my authentic self. So now I have to start to compensate and be something different than I'm supposed to be. And the further I get away from my essential nature, the sicker I get. Because when we think about it, hey, being yourself is, is the most natural thing. That's what we're here to be. And if we look at why people are anxious and why they're depressed, very often it has to do with they're not living according to their own value system and their own ideals, and their life isn't reflective of really who they are because they're making decisions to fit in and all their inhibitions and all those other things. So we have to heal soul sickness. And we don't interface through, to the soul through language. We interface through creativity and through ritual that we provide a lot of here. And finally, we come to spirit, body, mind, soul, spirit. So. Spirit, we talk about the creator, the, the divine matrix, the whole thing. My interface with this whole thing has to do with my own energy system. And this has been well-documented. Heart Math spends a lot of time on it, a lot of peer-reviewed science around it. So um, I have an electrical system in my body that directly affects my nervous system. And this thing is sort of my connection to the greater field out there. When this thing becomes compromised in some way, um, it directly hijacks my nervous system. And so doing energy medicine, energy psychology is a way to bypass the mind and get right into the autonomic nervous system. And so for a program to be holistic, it has to work on all of those things or else we're missing giant pieces of who we are. And if we have a problem in one of these things, body, mind, soul, spirit, it must affect the rest. And that means if we work on all of these things, my chances of resolving my problems are exponentially increased. It seems so simple. Now, there's a lot of centers out there that are and throwing things in like yoga and meditation and some mindfulness. And this is great. Um, this is, this is a, a big step in the right direction for the treatment industry. We've been doing it now for 18 years. Um, and our program, we use the word integrated because of the way that these things all fit together. So having yoga or meditation or some mindfulness or holotropic breath work or even food and nutrients, supplements, different kinds of therapy, unless these things all fit together, we're not gonna get their synergistic power. And so a lot of the people that come here, they have, they're, they're intelligent people. They have access to doctors and healers and this and that and 20 other things, and they do them. And yet they don't get what we call traction because these, these systems are not integrated. So when you come to the sanctuary, every single thing that's on your schedule and everybody gets a, a personal schedule every single morning with your activities on it, everything that's on there is designed to key off the session before it and wrap everything around and bring it all together because then uh, the program is so much stronger and each session then just layers on the session before it and that's what integrated means.